everybody, Edo here, and a few weeks back I was at my friendly local game store up in San Rafael, Gamescape, and saw Seven Wonder Architects. Have not, had not heard much about it, but we have a lot of friends and family that like Seven Wonders, and I turned it around, and I see you're building wonders, and I said, cool, let's pick it up. So, I get home, or where I, at the hotel we were at, or whatever, and uh, I open it up, and I see inside of it, well, there's a lot of punch board at first, but started putting together. And each one of these wonders gets put in its own little container. You you put tape, uh, uh, not tape, a sticker labeling each one. And each wonder has, uh, gets built out of these own, of uh, these tokens. So you have, uh, your, like, if, if this is the pyramid wonder, um, I'll face it towards you, but each player is trying to, the objective, the objective of the game is to have the most victory points, but a big way to get them is by building your wonder, and the game ends when one player completes their wonder. Um, and so it starts face down, you know, towards you, and you're building it, working from top to bottom. I'll talk a little bit more, but this awesome, visceral, visual design, right? You're building this building. And uh, so every player, when they play, they pick one of these containers. It has their deck in its own thing. And then you have some shared components here. I'm going to make some room in here with your tokens, your cards. It comes with a cat um, um, standy, but actually when I went and bought it, the game store was like, hey, here, we can give you a little mini, which was cool. Um, but I'm opening this and looking at this, and, and of course the, the rule book is just one sheet with like three pages here. But I was sort of taken aback because to me, when I think of Seven Wonders, I think of the dinosaur companies. And all of the things that is in this box, the way this box is built and set up in the game, is reminiscent of what you'd see and experience in a Kickstarter, right? So for the last five, seven years, Kickstarter has been at the forefront at pushing product quality, like like very visual, uh, like like um, thematic experiences, really interesting components, game trays, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, just opening this, my set being a Kickstarter creator who's done a lot of stuff, it's like, well, they figured it out. The, the, the older... Companies have been watching, paying attention, and now they're doing as good as as what you'd normally see via Kickstarter. And so, doesn't leave much room for it. Of course, this is Antoine Balsa, so in addition to all the beauty, you have this like super smooth, fluid game, plays really quickly, um, that just works. And... I think this game is is going to be fantastic for tons of players. It's super accessible. It's super easy to play. It's got these great components, a little setup, but not much. Uh, and it just works. So wh why are you glowing about this game? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some space. I'll take out uh, another player, and I'll use these. So I'm going to move this over here. Let me move those over here. I'll use the standard cat token. And so setup is every player gets one of these. And what they're going to do is they're going to place their deck of cards to their left. Get rid of this, and they'll place their wonder in front of them, uh, you know, uh, construction side facing, so we're going to be flipping this. And then another player, we'll say this next player, and this is like reference information, but I don't need in front of me now. This player will be over here, and they have a, a, a totally different wonder that has like a different construction set. This one's like a statue uh, with a head. I can't do it here, but it's like, I'm building it here. So this will be face down for this player over here. And then I think I got that right, right? Like that. And then um, over here. And then they'll put their deck to their left, which is my right. Important, these decks are face up. Um, I think in the box I have to show it sort of face down for when they're stored, but it's very important they're face up. And, and then we have a few other components. I mean, this is a really super quick setup. I'm like talking about it, but we're gonna have our science tokens, our mystery cards in the center here. I wanna make sure this all stays on camera. One, two, three, this, this, this. Uh, you have your cat token in the middle for now. You have, based on the number of players, a certain amount of these war tokens and peace tokens. And then you have a bunch of these um, war points over here. Okay. That uh, is set up. Uh, like Seven Wonders can play a ton of players and you're just going to keep working around. Now, as I said, 
the game is going to end when one of us completes our wonder. Um, until then, we're just trying to have the most points. So on your turn, this is what you can do. You can take, you draw a card. You can draw the card to your left, in this case, a war card. Draw a card to your right, a resource, or upside down card in the middle. Now, there's a little bit of a distri different distribution here, but basically, they all have all the cards. But you, one or the other that you see, or one that you don't. Now, there are different types of cards. There are resource cards. These are the ones with the gray back. Resource cards are very straightforward. You play them in front of you. Like, whenever you play a card, whenever you draw a card, you just put it in front of you, right? There's no hand, nothing complicated. Just pick a card, put it down. When it comes to the resources, you're building your wonder bottom up. So in my case, it's like I always have to build an order. But in the case of, you know, the Zeus or whatever, he, you could choose either leg first. And as soon as, uh, and, and the, and the, Pieces just require resources, and they are either two different or two same, three different, three same. That's it. All the same or all different. So this first one for me is two different. So the way this works is the moment I flip over two different resources or place two different resources down to the player, it automatically flips. I can't control it. I can't stop it. Um, maybe I don't choose that card, but as soon as it goes down, it automatically happens. You pay those resources, you discard them, and you flip it. If it's got victory points, you got victory points. If it has a special ability, you get the special ability. The pyramid one doesn't have any special abilities. Each wonder has like a different theme of its ability. And it's like, get a bonus, extra card for this, whatever. Um, there's the gold. Gold is just a wild resource. And again, if it would mean it would trigger the victory condition, you have to, not victory, the build condition, you have to use it. You have no control. Okay, super, just playing resources, 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 build, resources, resources, super smooth. So, uh, the next thing you can get is science, and you play this down, and when you have uh, two of the same or three different, you turn them in, and you can get a science token. You can pick three showing, or a flip down one, and these will either give you like a bonus for any time you flip over a green card, or you, know, you play a green card, or a bonus when you finish your wonder or for the number of science tokens. So these are like, you know, not engine, quite engine building, but things that trigger combos. Um, you also then have the blue. Blue are just victory points when you play them. Or if they've got the little cat icon, the cat goes to you. It's worth victory points at the end of the game. Um, but also then when you're going to draw, when I see these, these two, it's my turn. I can go left, right, and front, right? Other players left, right, and front. Um, I get to sneak a peek at this card first, right? So pretty useful, lets you see all three cards. Lastly, we have the war cards, the red cards. Whenever you bring one out into play, it's got the main symbol and then it's got a horn. When the horn comes out, you have to go dun dun dun, dun like it, it literally says that, and you flip over one of the peace to war tokens and once er enough horns come out, always has to happen, enough horns come out and you flip those uh, tokens, there's a war. And then basically you do a comparison of crossed swords and shields with the other players uh, to your left and your right only like well, seven wonders and if you have more you're going to get three victory points nothing negative nothing bad and then players who have horns discard their cards but if you just had an icon without a horn then you would you would keep that card um that's it you just you're like drawing going drawing it just goes round and round really smooth and where the interesting decision comes from is do I take what I see in front of me, one or the other, or do I go for the lucky choice and sort of which direction am I focusing on building my wonder or do I want to get some science? So it has all those elements. It's just so quick, so smooth, so welcoming and gateway. And then it has these gorgeous cases, the gorgeous components, really like evocative wonder building. Um, I think it's great. It's, it's just awesome to see, you know, these older um, games getting, not that Seven Wonders, I mean, Seven Wonders has, is not even a good, like, an example of, a, 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 like, a really crunchy game in and of itself. But I just, I think it's exciting to see these types of games being made. So, um, easy to recommend. Seven Wonder, Wonders, Wonder, right? Oop. Seven Wonders Architects. Hey, everybody. Edo here, and thanks for watching Gaming with Edo reviews over here on this playlist, League and Insider videos over here on this one. Subscribe, share, all that good stuff, but most importantly, play some great games. Thanks.